Hello everybody, Robert Breaker here today, and uh, I've got a sermon for you. Sorry I'm wearing a hat while I'm preaching, but the sun's pretty hot, and well, I didn't bring any sunglasses today. But uh, today I wanted to, uh, well, speak to you from the heart, I guess. Um, I had some ideas for some sermons in front of the whiteboard, and I wanted to get out there and do that. But, uh, well, I thought I'd get out here today and just speak to you from the heart about some things that the Lord's been laying on my heart lately. Um, in Florida, we're under lockdown, yes, but they do give you uh, uh, allowances, if you will, to go get groceries and also exercise. Well, I'm here at the park where people are, are out and about exercising, so I'm out here today and I'm going to be walking afterwards uh, around the park here. Um, actually, there's some little boy over there said, I saw an alligator back here. So there might be some alligators pop up behind me over my shoulder. We'll see um, if that happens or not. But I want to talk to you today from the Bible. And uh, my message, I'm just going to give you a bunch of Bible verses and just give you as many Bible verses as I can and just go to the scriptures. It's been an interesting week for me and uh, it's been really amazing. The Lord uh, often during the week will, will just bring things across your, your path. And I've talked to other preachers as well and they say, well, sometimes you just don't know what to preach for the Sunday sermon. And then they say, but uh, the Lord just through that week, through Bible study, through prayer, through phone calls, through email, all of a sudden the theme pops up. <laughs> and it's like the Lord is like, you know, look at this. This is what you need to talk about. And, and it's the theme that you've been, you've been covering through the whole week. And so this whole week I've been getting emails, phone calls, been talking to people. Um, and it's just so many people that are Christians are hurting. And they're hurt by other Christians. And to me, that is so sad. That is so sad that someone would call themselves a Christian and then go out of their way to hurt someone else that is also a Christian. I, I think that's sad. I think that's very sad. And so I'll be honest with you, I did not want to do this sermon. I was going to go another way. I was going to talk about something else. But the Lord just kept bringing this on. And then we went through some things this week also that just kind of confirmed it. Robert, it's like the Lord was saying, Give them this. There's some people out there that are hurting and they need comfort from the scriptures. And so I'm not giving this uh, message because I want to so much as, uh, as I have to. I believe this is what the Lord has laid on my heart. And I believe that when you, you preach, you should preach from the heart. Amen. So what I'm going to do today, I don't even have any points in the message. I just have a list of scriptures here that I want to read. And the title of this message is Hurting Others With Your Words. And why we shouldn't do that. We should not hurt others with words. And yet, all so often, that's probably one of the most common sins in the world, is somebody hurting somebody else with their words. And that's not something that we should do. So I want to give you some scriptures today. I want to talk about what the Bible says about it and what the Bible says about our tongue. And how there are certain things that we should say and there are certain things that we should not say. <laughs> Amen. And I want to be a true Bible believer. I want to follow the scriptures. Not just hold up the Bible and say, I believe it. I want to uh, follow it and do what it says. And it tells me there's a certain way to act. There's a certain way to react. There's a certain way to talk and a certain way to walk. And so I'm supposed to follow what the Bible says. So let's start out today with Job chapter 27 and verse 4. I just want to share these verses and I hope it's an encouragement. Um, a lot of people I think will be helped by this because a lot of people seem to be going through the same thing. Someone that they love has hurt them by something they said and they're they're hurt. Now I know the Bible says great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. I understand we that are saved why, why we shouldn't be offended or easily offended but you know that we're human beings and words can and do hurt sometimes and so I understand that there's some people hurting and uh, so I want to talk to them to try to comfort them but I'm hoping that this sermon will also go out to those that are doing the hurting to the hurters <laughs> and if you're one of those that is hurting people with your words you need to take into account what the Bible says and you need to rethink some of the things that you say you might even need to offer an apology. So I just want to throw that out there. First of all, Job 27 and verse 4. In Job 27, 4, Job says, My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. You know the story of Job and what all Job went through, and boy, did he go through a lot. If ever a man had, I guess you could say, 
the right to say something? <laughs> it was Job. He lost his house, he lost his family, he lost everything he had. You know, if he would have said something bad, you could have gone, well, look what he went through, you know? <laughs> Not justifying his sin of speaking evil, but it's like, wow. He went through all that, far worse than most of us will ever go through in our lives. And he said, but you know what? I'm not going to say something I shouldn't. I'm not going to speak wickedness. I'm not going to utter deceit. There's something to be said about that. That was a man who wanted to do right. And he saw that it would be wrong to say something deceitful and wicked. So he said, I'm going to keep my mouth. He said, I'm going to keep quiet. Let's go to another verse. Let's go to Psalms 34. Now, it's interesting to me, and I recommend when people are suffering, when people are going through things, I recommend, hey, go to the Psalms. The book of Psalms is Old Testament. Sure, we understand that. But it's also a, a book that really is for comfort. Because a lot of times you have David in the Old Testament in the book of Psalms talking about this guy's my enemy and he's attacking me and this guy's my enemy and he's hurting me and this guy's my enemy and he said this about me. And it's all about, Lord, I trust you. Lord, protect me from their lies. Lord, and, and it's a lot of people have told me, Brother Breaker, I went through some of the worst times of my life and reading the Psalms gave me comfort. So reading the book of Psalms, if you're really going through some things, if you're suffering, if people are lying about you, if you're, if you're having to go through some things in which there are people just for no reason just hurting you on purpose with their words, the Psalms is a good place to go. And you can identify with David and some of the things that he went through. Psalms 34, 12. Psalms 34, 12. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he shall see good? Verse 13 says, Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. The first verse says, hey, you want to have good days, you want to live a long life, you want to have a good time in life and want everything to go good? Well, keep your tongue from speaking evil. Don't say things you shouldn't. Boy, that's a, a good verse there, an interesting verse. Hey, let's, uh, let's watch what we say because words can hurt people. Psalms 50. Let's go to Psalms. I just have lots of verses here that I just want to share with you, then give you a little personal testimony as well and just try to be a blessing, okay? Psalms 50, verse 19 and 20. Psalms 50, verse 19 says, Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sitteth and speaketh against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. <laughs> now, clearly, this is not a passage of Scripture saying, and that's a good thing to do. No, clearly this is a passage of Scripture saying, and that's wrong, and you shouldn't do that. That's not something that God wants. And I just find it interesting if we try to spiritually apply it to us, who is our mother? Oh, Love Steroloff says, this book right here is my spiritual mother. So if you're a brother in Christ and I'm a brother in Christ, well, our Father is God in heaven for sure. Who's our mother? This book. We're both saved by the same book. By the words from this book is what showed us how to be saved. So the last thing we should do if we've got the same spiritual mother, if we're both saved by the blood of Christ, the last thing we should do is lie about one another and evil speak and say things about one another that are just wrong. We should not, as it says here in this passage, slander and give our mouths to evil to frame deceit. Shouldn't do it. Shouldn't do it. Psalm 64. Psalms chapter 64. And yet what's sad to me is so many Christians do do it. I don't know if I've told this story before, but we got a helicopter coming over. Where I live here in, in Florida, there's several helicopter fields and uh, they, they train all the time. So I don't know if that's too loud or not, but always seeing helicopters fly over. But uh, I was going to tell you this story here about, well, when I got saved, I went to Bible school and then right after Bible school, I got out, went to Honduras for a couple months and then started deputation. So I just hit the ground running in the ministry. And uh, I was surprised at how often you would find other Christians that would talk bad about other Christians. I was very surprised at how often people that were called preachers and ministers and ordained ministers, how often they would cuss. And it was about that time the internet came out. You know, I, was, I graduated from high school in 92 and graduated from Bible school in 98. So the uh, internet was still kind of in its infancy, if you will, in the 90s. But I remember what they had was called chat rooms. And you used to could go to a chat room and there were all these Christian chat rooms. And I would visit there from, some, from time to time just to see what Christians were saying. And you know, I had to stop going there. 
And other brothers, the same thing. They told me the same thing. They said, Brother Breaker, I got in these Christian chat rooms and then I got off really fast. And I'm like, well, why? Why did you get away from them? Because all they were doing was cussing each other out and yelling each other and saying bad things about each other. And they called themselves Christians. <laughs> and they were like, I don't see that as a Christian thing. The Bible says we're not to speak evil of one another. And so that's one of the things that I learned in an early in the ministry. There's a lot of people out there that claim to be Christians, and all they want to do is speak bad about one another. And that's not what the Bible teaches. By the end of this sermon today, I'm hoping that uh, you will see what the Bible says about that. I'm giving Old Testament right now, but I'm going to the New Testament. I'm going to show you Paul. I'm going to show you what Paul says about how that we who are saved are supposed to keep our tongues and keep from speaking. So I want you to see that. But it, it, it was kind of a shame to me to see that. To see these people on these chat rooms claiming they were ministers, claiming they were pastors of churches or missionaries or, or Bible scholars. And they couldn't have an honest discussion uh, of being polite. They were, they were using the F-bomb. They were using horrible language, screaming, if you will, through the computer at other Christians. And that always bothered me. And that was one thing that I wanted not to do. I made up my mind, I don't want to be that type of Christian that, that you know, cusses people out. I want to be someone who's, who's trying to do right, who's trying to live right, who's trying to speak the way the Bible says we're supposed to speak. Psalm 64, 3 and 4. Psalm chapter 64, verse 3 and 4. David is talking about his enemies that are against him, and he says, "...who wet their tongue like a sword, and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words." that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. <laughs> David said, people are making words into swords and they can't wait to just go out and cut you. They're taking their words like arrows and they're just shooting them at you. That shows me a dirty heart. That's, that shows me somebody that's not what the Bible says, that doesn't have the fruits of the Spirit. If all they do is just to live to attack other people and want to hurt them with words, that's a shameful, shameful thing. That's what the Bible says. We shouldn't do that. Psalms 120, verse 1 through 7. And uh, in Psalms chapter 120, there's something else. And here we have a psalm speaking about, well, be careful what you say with your lips. Psalms 120, and I'll just read verses 1 through 7. The whole chapter, if you will. In my distress, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. What shall be given unto thee, or what shall be done unto thee, thou false tongue? Sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of juniper. Woe is me that I sojourn in Meshech, that I dwell in the tents of Kedar. My soul hath long dwelt with him that hateth peace. I am for peace. But when I speak, they are for war. Whew. Man, that, that just means so much to me because I've seen so much in my time as a minister of others claiming to be King James Bible believers. And all they want to do is declare war on other King James Bible believers. All they want to do is fight and attack and name call and ridicule and say mean and hateful things to other Christians. They use their words like a sword, like coals, like hot coals, like fire. And all they want to do is try to hurt other Christians. I don't believe that's right. I don't believe that's what we as Christians are supposed to do. I believe that shows that a man is carnal when he does that and not spiritual. And what the Bible says, it says, walk in the spirit that you fulfill not the lust of the flesh. So I want to be a, a, not just a Christian, and I am, I'm saved, and I'm happy I'm saved. But I want to be more than just a saved Christian. I want to be a spirit-filled Christian. I want to be the type of Christian that is walking and talking the way the Bible says I'm supposed to. And I'm not supposed to walk around with my chip on my shoulder and just waiting for someone to say something so I can unload on them and, you know, hack them to death with a sword. <laughs> That's not what I'm supposed to do. I'm not supposed to sit there and just wait and then shoot them full of arrows. I'm supposed to what? Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But it's just, it's interesting to me. Uh, Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> Same thing the Old Testament people went through, people of God. Same thing that we're still going through today. There's always going to be somebody that doesn't like you. There's always going to be somebody that talks bad about you. That's just life. What do we do? Well, the best we can do. Just say, well, I forgive you and move on. I mean, that's all we really can do. Now, we could lash out and fight back, but what good does that start? <laughs> uh, sometimes the best thing to do is just walk away. You know, I mean, 
One of my favorite verses is leave off contention before it be meddled with. And before this sermon's over, we're going to get to that verse in the context of it. (laughs) I don't like contention. I don't like people arguing. I don't like fighting. I don't like that at all. And I go to the Bible and the Bible says, no, don't do that. So when I see people that claim to be Christians and they do do that, it makes me scratch my head and go, okay, so, (laughs) all right, either they're saved and they're carnal or perhaps they're not saved because that's not the fruits of the Spirit. and That's not the way a Christian's supposed to be. All right, let's go to Proverbs chapter 6. So I don't want to be like that. Now, I told you I didn't want to preach this sermon because a lot of people will say, Brother Breaker, you're just talking about your enemies. We, you don't need to talk about them. Don't give them the time of day. I get emails like that all the time. And I, and I don't. I, I don't want to feed them, if you will, and give them more to speak about. I don't, I don't want to attack them back. I don't want them to take me away from the ministry that God's called me to do. But at the same time, I see people that are getting hurt by them and others. And so I can't just zip, not say anything. I've got to go to the book and say, now what does the Bible say about that? And so that's what I'm doing today. I'm just trying to give you scriptures. Yes, I go through it, and I'm sure you do too. We all have someone that says things about us that, that are just wrong, that are, that are awful, that are evil, that are wicked. Well, let's don't be like them, all right? Never let someone bring you down to their level. Try to bring them up, okay? That's what we're supposed to do, and we're supposed to edify. So that's all I know to do is just go back to the book, back to the book, back to the book. What does the Bible say about that? What does the Bible say about that? What does the Bible say about that? So today, just Scripture, Scripture, Scripture. Proverbs 6.16. Proverbs 6.16 says, These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven, are an abomination unto him. So these are things that God says, I hate it when men do these things. These are some things that God hates. It says a proud look. Well, proud look. How about that? A lying tongue. God hates a proud look. God hates a lying tongue. And hands that shed innocent blood. God hates murder. God hates murder. And heart that deceiveth wicked imaginations. God hates it when someone sits around and just kind of stews and steams and go, oh, how do I get this guy? How do I hurt that person? What can I do to to get that guy all riled up and and miserable? (laughs) God doesn't like that at all, at all. A heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief. God says, I hate it when someone just cannot wait to go do something evil or say something evil. And yet there's people out there and they claim to be Christians and that's all they they want. They can't wait to just jump on something and get in and attack and and, and ridicule and and mock and and slander and lie. They, They can't wait to run to that and do that. Well, I've got a Bible and I've got the Holy Spirit and I look at that. I can't wait to run away from that because I see that that's an abomination to run toward a fight and want to get involved in it. No, if there's a fight, we kind of wait back. Somebody asks us, what do you think? Well, that's when we say, well, let me pull out my sword and show you from the Scripture. Well, the Bible says this, that we don't just run in in our own opinion, in our own flesh, in our dirty heart, start name-calling and and attacking too. That's a mob. And mob rule is not good. Well, let me get to the last one here. And it says here in verse 19, A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. He that soweth discord among brethren. A lot of people out there that claim to be Christians, and what are they doing? They're sowing discord among the brethren. And God says, I hate that. That is an abomination unto me. And I don't think Christians should do it. All right? Hey, you know, if you don't like it, fine. That's just what the Bible says. (laughs) Okay? Now, let's continue. Proverbs chapter 4. You know, I'm not giving my opinion. All right? I'm trying to tell you what God says in the book. And if you're one of those that's guilty, then get right. Amen? Get right with God. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 to 24. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You know, usually what you say with your mouth is because you believe it in your heart. And if dirty words and and mean-spirited, hateful, critical things are coming out of your mouth, then that proves you have a mean-spirited, critical, hateful heart. Get your heart right, and then you begin to speak right. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. 
perverse. That means corrupt. That means dirty and bad. We shouldn't talk about dirty and corrupt things. And perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. So we don't need to say things we shouldn't. We need to put away perverse lips. We need to do right. So these are Old Testament verses about how we should speak. And we shouldn't, you know, live our lives as Christians to try to go around and, and prove something to others and say, well, I'm always right, so it's all about me. Let me tell you what I think. And if you don't agree, well, you're an idiot. You're a moron. You're this. Yeah. It, that's not right. I've tried to learn as a Christian how a Christian is supposed to be, and I always seek out older men that are ministers that, that are trying to live right and do right. And I want to follow them as an example. Now, I've had some good examples, and I've had some poor examples. I'll be honest with you. I've had some men that were examples, and they weren't what they were supposed to be. I'll be honest. And they didn't speak the way they were supposed to speak. Matter of fact, they were hateful and mean-spirited and angry, and uh, they would you know, cuss people out. And I looked at that and go, well, that's not right. And so I've tried to distance myself from kind of people like that. And I still do. But I want to be the kind of Christian that God wants. Well, these are Old Testament passages about that, about how to speak and how not to use your mouth for evil and mischief and evil and wickedness. Now let's go to the New Testament. What does the New Testament tell us? Because a lot of people say, well, Brother Breaker, we're not in the Old Testament. Right, we're under grace. So is grace an excuse to sin? <laughs> are you telling me now that we're under grace, then we can talk bad about people? <laughs> no. No, because we have the commands in the New Testament that tell us not to speak evil. Let's go to Titus chapter 3. So I want to be the type of Christian that keeps my tongue from evil. I don't want to run to mischief and evil and, and do and say bad things. I want to do right. Titus chapter 3, verse 2 through 5 says, To speak evil of no man. This is Paul. To be no brawlers. Okay, what's a brawler? Somebody that just cannot wait to get into a fight with someone. And they go around provoking you, trying to get you to start a fight. And you know what? Oftentimes, they're successful. They just keep provoking you, provoking you. When I was in uh, high school, I've told this story before, in high school, the rule in my high school was if there was a fight, the person who threw the first punch is expelled from school for like three days or something. Uh, they're kicked out of school. So you didn't want to get in a fight. Well, unless you, you know, unless you didn't want to go to school, I guess you did. So what people did, knowing that rule, was that instead of getting a fight, if two people were, hated each other or were angry, they'd push each other. And they say, come on, come on, come on. And they just keep pushing you and pushing you and pushing you. And what were they doing? The person pushing the hardest was thinking in their head, as soon as he throws the punch, I can go, aha, aha, everyone saw that? The principal's going to kick you out. And so it was all about trying to get you to attack first. When they were the ones that started it by pushing so hard. <laughs> I said, you know what, I'm never going to fall into that, that trap. And there were some times in my life in high school when people pushed me. And they pushed me again. I said, okay, you can push me all you want. But you're wrong. And I'd walk away. They pushed me in the back. I'd say, hey man, <laughs> see ya, walk away. I was not interested in fighting back. Now there was one time, there was one time when a guy pushed me and I punched him and uh, he bled in his mouth. He said, I got blood in my mouth. And, and for some reason, the, uh, the principal didn't kick me out of school. He called my mom and we got in there. He said, Robert Breaker, what, what happened? I said, the boy was calling me names. He was screaming at me. I said, you can ask anybody else around. He was just so mean and he pushed me and pushed me and I had enough and I punched him. I said, but you know, I'm in karate. And I said, I made sure when I punched, I held back a little. And so I didn't punch as hard as I would have. And, and I remember the, the principal going, okay, all right, well, you're not kicked out. You're gonna, I, I believe you. He goes, I know that kid. He, he's a bad kid. So, okay, go back to school. You know, go back to... So, you know, what a great illustration that was. Your testimony precedes you. People look at you as what type of person are you? Are you the type of person that all you do is just go around talking bad about people trying to cause fights? Are you the type of person that's trying to avoid that? And that if you do end up in a fight, that's the bad guy, not you, because you were just defending yourself. A neat story. That just came out of nowhere. I just brought that up. I remembered that. But what does it say here in uh, Titus? It says we're not supposed to be brawlers. So there in Titus 2, it says to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, 
showing all meekness unto all men. You mean we're supposed to be gentlemen, Robert Breaker? Yeah. A gentleman is not someone that just goes or lies and says things about someone that's not true and just attacks them and says bad things. about. That's not a gentleman. That's not a meek person. That's not someone who's following the scriptures. That is not a true King James Bible believer. Okay? I just want you to know that. That's someone that may be saved, possibly, and claim to be a King James Bible believer, but they are in the flesh. They're not walking in the Spirit. They're not what Paul said they're supposed to be. Let me read verse 3, 4, and 5. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. I love how Paul says that. You know, before we were saved, we were like this. <laughs> what is he insinuating? Um, are you saved if you're hateful and mean-spirited and angry and all these things he lists here and speaking evil and being a brawler? Are you? Hmm? That's what you're supposed to be like before you're saved. Now that you're saved, don't act that way, okay? <laughs> That's what Paul's saying. Verse 4, But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration renewing of the Holy Ghost. And it goes on there, talking about Jesus Christ and justified by grace, salvation by grace. So if Jesus saves us by His grace, um, does that mean we're supposed to have grace on others? Yeah, <laughs> I think that's what he's trying to explain there. And he's telling us not to be brawlers and not to speak evil of others. Let's go to James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 11. So I want to show you this because... It's really sad to me to see Christians devoting all their time to just attacking one another instead of working together to try to get people saved. When you've got the gospel, we've got salvation by grace through faith in the blood of Christ, we need to take that to others and preach that for salvation because that's the gospel, how that Christ died for our sins. Instead of going to somebody else that preaches that gospel and then saying, now all I want to do is attack you and put you down and hurt your ministry. How does that help anything? How many lost people are going to go to hell now because they listen to that person talk bad about someone who's preaching the gospel? That, that, that's just, it's so sad. It's so sad. When we get to heaven, we'll see all the damage that was done by evil speaking. But James 4.11 says, Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. Now, I know he's talking here to, you know, Jews, the 12 tribes scattered abroad, but spiritually we can apply that to the church. And sure, we're brothers in Christ if we're saved, so we shouldn't speak evil of one another. And yet, there are people that claim to be Christians, and they do. They do. They say horrible things about other Christians. 1 Peter 3. And, and it's a shame to me to have to even say that, but it's true. So what do I do as a minister? Well, I want to show you the verses that say, don't do that. So it's, it's something that you learn and something that you say, okay, wow, I'm, I'm wrong. I need to get right. I need to stop doing that. So you get right because Christians have a testimony to protect. And if your testimony is bad, why would you expect someone would listen to you? How, why would you expect that someone wants to get saved if they see you as a Christian and you're a mopey person that's just bitter and angry and mean and all the time and only speaking about others? Imagine somebody's not saved looking at that going, wow, if that's what Christians are, I don't want to be that. No, we're supposed to be like the Bible says, full of joy and peace and long-suffering and meekness and kindness and things like that. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. 1 Peter 3, 8 through 12. 1 Peter 3, 8 through 12 says, Finally, be all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brothers, be pitiful, be courteous. Peter is writing to Christians and he's saying we should all have the same mind. We should all think alike. Okay, let's all think alike and let's all follow what the Bible says because that's what I'm giving you. Okay, and we should have compassion. We should love. We should be pitiful. Okay, uh, what does that mean? It means take pity on others. If all you're doing is, is bashing other people, you don't have any pity. You're pitiless. You're supposed to be pitiful, full of pity. Courteous. Verse 9, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Well, that sounds like Paul. With as much as life within you, live peaceably with all men. Wow. Verse 12, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. 
I don't want to do evil. I want to do right. I don't want to speak evil of others. I want to have compassion. I want to be courteous. I want to be full of pity and love and brotherly kindness. I want to be a true Christian. Well, a lot of people say, well, then you're a wimp. They think that being a gentleman and following the Bible makes you a wimp. What? Was Paul a wimp? Was Peter a wimp? Was Jesus Christ a wimp? Not on your life. And they're the ones telling us to do these things. And then they're telling us that we're wrong if we don't do them. So don't you call me a, you know, some sort of a, a wimpy Christian for, for wanting to be meek and kind. No. It takes more courage to be that than it does to just in the flesh go talk bad about people. So I want to be like the Bible says. I want to be a true gentleman. A true gentleman. 1 Peter 2, 1 and 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 and 2 says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So we're to lay aside all guile and malice and hypocrisies and envies and evil speakings. So don't allow yourself as a Christian to speak evil of other Christians. Okay? That's what the Bible says. You can either choose to obey or you can disobey. But, uh, boy, I'd hate to be in your shoes <laughs> when you get to heaven and find out, uh-oh, I lost all my rewards because I wasn't what the Bible said I was supposed to be. Well, that'd be awful. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. This is a passage of Scripture that, well, I don't think I'll ever forget because I put this on the gravestone of my grandmother. And I told this story before, but my grandmother wasn't saved for a long, long time. She didn't get saved till she was, I think, 92 or 93. And I was able to lead her to the Lord. But if you'd known my grandmother before she got saved, she was very bitter, very angry person, always saying things that hurt. Uh, very hurtful, a lot of the things she said. They were just, they were just brutally honest, really. <laughs> a lot of times she was just being honest. But, you know, the old saying is the truth hurts. Sometimes she said things she, she didn't have to say, but she just said it to hurt you. And she knew it hurt you. And she hurt you on purpose. And, and, it, and it hurt. It really did. But after she got saved and she, she was only alive for another year or two, I, I did see a change. I did see her nicer, more caring. I saw her smile more. I don't think I ever saw her smile when I was a kid, not once. <laughs> and uh, I did see that she was a little bit different than she was before. And I thank God for that. And uh, so most people remembered my grandmother and say, oh, that old hateful, mean-spirited, angry Lucy. <laughs> so when she passed away, well, I put that on her grave because uh, I thought about that toward the end of her life, how she did put that away, and uh, all because of she got saved. So let me, let me show you the passage that we put on her gravestone. It's Ephesians t uh, chapter 4, verse 29 through 31. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to edify. Edify means build up, not tear down. And evil speaking... And malice and hatred is all to tear someone down because you don't like that person. Well, it doesn't matter if you like or don't like another Christian. The Bible says we're to esteem others more highly than ourselves. And we are not to tear them down. We are to edify. Okay? So if we don't like them, and yet we think they're wrong in something, then we, we say, okay, brother or sister, the Bible says this, this, and let's give them scripture. Let's don't give them our opinion. Let's don't give them our own words. Let's don't evil speak and talk bad about them to others. Let's say, hey, I think you're wrong. The Bible says this. And let's give them scripture. So it says there, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of, of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. We're supposed to be ministers of grace. That means we have grace and practice grace, and we speak grace. Why? And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed until the day of redemption. It grieves the Holy Spirit of God when you speak evil of others and say bad things. If you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit, and you would know that. You would feel bad when you say bad things about others that aren't true. Well, do you? If you are a Christian and you are speaking evil and, and, and saying things you shouldn't, then it should grieve the Spirit within you. Verse th that's the context. That's not my words. That's the Bible. That's the context. Verse 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. 
So we who are saved, we shouldn't be bitter. We shouldn't be angry. We shouldn't have wrath or clamor. We shouldn't speak evil of others. There should be no malice. We should esteem others more highly than ourselves. We should have grace with other Christians. If you don't agree with them, walk away. You don't have to keep pushing them and pushing them and pushing them trying to start a fight. You're a brawler. You're unruly if you do that. And you are against the very Bible that you claim to believe. And you're showing the world that you're not a true Christian. And yet you're making the person that you're against out to be the bad guy. I find it so sad but yet so funny how people are out there attacking someone saying, this guy's the devil, this guy's the evil, this guy... The... And, they're, and they're trying so hard to convince the world that that guy's bad. And all they're doing is convincing the body of Christ, no dude, you're bad because you're not what the Bible says you're supposed to be. You're a critical, spirited, hateful, mean person and you are the opposite of what Paul says to be because all you want to do is speak evil of others. It's so sad, and yet it's so funny. I mean, I'm sorry, but how come they can't see it? How can, I just, I don't get it. <laughs> well, they'll see it one day, I tell you. Uh, when they get to heaven, if they're saved, imagine, the Bible says, well, well, I'll get to that in the end. I got a verse about that. We're going to give account for what we say someday. I want you to think about that. But anyway, let's continue. Let's go to um, 1 Peter 4.11. 1 Peter 4.11. I don't want to be that guy who's always going around talking bad about others. Because that's not the kind of guy the Bible says I'm supposed to be. Um, some people, they say, Brother Breaker, we appreciate you for not you know, making videos against other Christians. A lot of videos on YouTube, all they are is against other Christians. When there's so many other things that you could be talking about, you choose to talk bad about others. And the Bible tells us, don't do that. The Bible says, speak evil of no man. Um, Years ago, there was the Spanish Bible issue. It's still an issue today. But I went to the mission field as a missionary. Most people use the 1960 Spanish Bible, which is like an RSV in Spanish. And many of them claim to be King James Bible believers, but yet they're using an RSV in Spanish. I saw that. I had to say something. Now, I didn't attack them. I didn't ridicule them. I didn't, you know, call them names. I just wrote a book and said the brief history of the Spanish Bible. And I said, you claim to be King James in English. You're using an RSV in Spanish. A very corrupt Bible in Spanish. If you want, want to find out more about that, go look up my video on YouTube entitled, Why I Don't Use the 1960 Reign of Valera Bible. It is full of errors, mistakes, and doctrinal just heresies. It's a bad translation, and it's no good. Well, I spoke up about it, and I did my absolute best to be nice and present the facts. I didn't want to present my opinion. And it would have been easy for me to do that. And, and, but I said, no, I'm going to stick with the facts. And I put up a website, my old website, rrb3.com. I put a lot of stuff up about the right Bible in Spanish. And I found that the best Spanish Bible is the Valera 1602 Purified out of Monterey, Mexico. And the church there trying to get Spanish Bible as close as possible to King James. So I said, okay, that's it. Whew, boy, did I get attacked. I can't, I should have kept a lot of those old emails of all the things that you, you would be shocked that these people call themselves Christians and then send emails with those type of words in them and things like that. But I said, no, I'm going to stick with the facts. I'm not going to fight back and use bad words like those people do. And I never did. And I just wrote another book. And I know I've got four books now about you know the Spanish Bible. You can find them on my old website, rrb3.com. Um, I've got a lot of videos on YouTube about which Bible in Spanish. And I just stick with the facts showing the Valera 1602 Purified is the best Spanish Bible as closest to the King James. I even have you know, a chart where I compare over 200 something verses and show how the Valera 1602 purified. Well, I said all that to say this. I cannot tell you how many times over the last 10, 15 years, however long it's been, that I've gotten emails, I've gotten phone calls from people. And they all said the same thing. Brother Breaker, I was reading the 1960 and I saw that it had errors and mistakes and it was not the King James. And so I began to go to YouTube and I wanted to find the facts for myself. They said, I found this guy, I found that guy, I found this guy, I found... And they all, instead of just telling you the facts of the matter, all they would do was fight with one another and attack one another. And boy, they were calling each other names. They're saying, yeah, that guy's not even saved. And, calling... and they said, the thing that impressed me the most, Brother Breaker, now these are their words, was that in all your material, you didn't attack. 
You just simply gave the facts. And that's what made me want to learn more from you. Because you are just presenting, these are the facts of this issue. You are not saying, now that blockhead, blunderhead, moron, fool, jerk, jackass, son of a gun over there doesn't, you didn't talk like that. You said, now some people might use this, some people believe this, but then there's this list of facts, and you stuck with the facts. Now that's something I was told to do by older preachers. Um, they told me, they said, Brother Breaker, always footnote, always give facts, and don't give your opinion. Don't say things. And I do have my opinions. <laughs> Let me throw that out there. <laughs> I do have opinions of certain people, but I'm not going to share those publicly because that would be wrong. That would be me going against the Word of God, not being gentle, not being meek, not being kind. That would be me evil speaking, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So I always looked at that and said, wow, they, they, they wanted what I had to say because I was giving the truth and not calling names, not putting down. Let's go to James chapter 1. Did we read 1 Peter 4.11? No, we did not. Let's read 1 Peter 4.11 first. 1 Peter 4.11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. When you speak, is Jesus Christ glorified? Whenever I talk, whenever I preach, whenever I teach the Bible, the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, now how does God get glory from this? Because that's what I want. I want Him to be glorified through my ministry. I don't want, to be a, I don't want it to be about me. I don't want to do what I do because it makes me feel good. I don't want to speak and say, and look at me, you must follow me, it's all about me. It's not about me. It's about Jesus and His Word and truth. I don't matter. I do not matter. It's not me. It's how do we glorify the Lord? Well, do you think it glorifies the Lord to call people names? This guy's a heretic. He's a moron. He's a jerk. He's a phony. He's a liar. He's a... Is that edifying? Is that glorifying Jesus Christ? No, it is not. It is you using your mouth in the flesh to put others down. And it shows your dirty, angry, hateful heart full of spite and malice. And it shows that you just want to put other people down. You're not a true Christian. Now, you might be saved, but you are certainly not following the Scriptures when you do that. And it certainly does not glorify God. Okay? I don't know how to make it any more plainer than that. that that's just sound Bible truth. Amen? <laughs> sound Bible truth. You either want it or you don't. You know, some of you are getting convicted right now. Some of you are. Some of you, I know you watch me, you that attack me. And you just watch me because you want to nitpick and you want to find little things that I say to use against me. Well, how do you use that against me? Well, that's Scripture. How do you usually use the Scripture? I know what's going to happen with this video. And I planned for it and I'm waiting for it. A lot of people that attack me and hate me and, and we just want to talk bad about me on the Internet, they're going to take this. And they're going to take things out of context. They're going to try to make me look out uh, to be like some horrible, evil, heretic Christian. <laughs> But all they're going to do is expose themselves when they say he's a jerk, he's a moron, he's a fool, he's a liar. He's a fool. All it is is just showing that they are not what the Bible says they're supposed to be. And you know what? I care about them. The Bible says we're supposed to forgive them. Well, I forgive them. I do. I do forgive them. I just would not want to be in their shoes for anything in the world. Because, uh, well, someday they're going to have to give account to God for what they said. And, uh, well, I forgive them. But uh, I'm sure the Lord's going to bring it up someday. I hope they can... Well, apologize and, you know, let it go and forgive themselves. And let me say this, too. If I've said anything hateful, mean-spirited, angry, wrong about some other brother or sister in Christ, and I've hurt them, I apologize. My intention is never to want to hurt somebody. I want so bad to be what the Bible says to be, a gentleman who's meek and kind and compassionate and loving and caring. I do not wish to hurt other people. So if I've ever said anything that hurts you, I apologize. Now... If it's the truth, I don't apologize for the truth. But if I was in the flesh, because I'm human, there might be that I, you know, a lot of people say, Brother Breaker, you, you just don't know how to keep your mouth shut, do you? <laughs> but a lot of times in my life, when, when I see something wrong, I have to say something. And I do. But I always try to say the right thing, and I always try to say, but the Bible says this. And, and I try not to make it my opinion, okay? I try to make it scripture. And uh, a lot of times I've been on deputation. I preached in churches. And I get done and someone comes up to me after the sermon and says, I don't like what you said. You said this, that, and the other thing. And I think you're wrong. And I say, right there, let's stop. 
Where's your Bible? Let's look this up. Let me show you what the Bible says. Because I will not apologize for what the Bible says. But if I ever said anything hateful, mean-spirited, angry, and I called someone a name or something, I'm sorry. I don't want to do that. I don't believe that that's the Christian thing to do. Okay? I just want to throw that out there. And I wonder if, if, if some of these people that attack Robert Breaker are man enough to, to issue a public apology for, for the things they've said about me. Hmm. I wonder. I'm not going to hold my breath, but I just, I wonder, you know. James 1.19. James 1.19 says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Okay? You claim to be a King James Bible believer. All right? I told you what it says. Are you a Bible doer? If you are, then you are supposed to be a compassionate, meek, caring, loving, nice person who does not speak evil of others. If you're not that, then you're the opposite. You're hateful, mean-spirited, critical, bitter, angry, mad, full of malice, and you're talking bad about others. Well, then I'm sorry, but you are not right with God. And I'm praying for you, and I pray that you will get right with God. Let's go to Proverbs 16, 28. Now, sometimes you can be friends with other Christians, and I suggest that. And I want you to be friends with other Christians. Um, the greatest fellowship in the world that I've ever had was with other Christians. But also the other extreme. Some of the worst fellowship I've ever had was with other Christians. Uh, my old pastor used to say, the people that hurt you the most in this world, in the ministry, are other Christians. And when he said that, and I just gotten saved, I was in Bible school, I kind of laughed. I was like, ha, that's not true. Christians are wonderful people. Uh, they, they just love each other. And I found out, no, he's right. Sometimes other Christians will hurt you. Sometimes they know they did it, and they did it on purpose to hurt you. Other times they might have said something they didn't mean to hurt you, but they hurt you. Well, they shouldn't. They shouldn't. That should not be what we do as Christians, try to hurt people. Sometimes, as a Christian, somebody hurts you, and you have to withdraw yourself from them, and you can't be friends anymore. And I hate that. Let's go to Proverbs 16, 28. Proverbs chapter 16, 28. A froward man soweth strife. And a whisperer separateth chief friends. Hmm. Sometimes there's times when Christians say things about you that they shouldn't. And they don't repent. They don't apologize. Or maybe they apologize and they go, no, I take it back. I don't apologize or whatever. And they, they show clearly that they don't want to be your friend. They just want to talk bad about you. Well, all right. Time to separate. I love you in the Lord. I'm praying for you. I, I'll see you in heaven. But uh, have a nice life. You know, and you have to walk away. Now, that's sad. That's very sad. There's been some times in my life when I've seen that happen. And it's sad. It's one of the saddest things in the world. And every time, it was about a non-essential issue. Some little thing that someone said, well, I don't agree with you on that. Okay, so what? It's not a doctrinal issue. It's not important. It's not salvation. So why does it even matter? Well, oftentimes, they get in their head, well, well, if you don't believe like I do on that, then we can't be friends. Okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> you know, I've got the Lord. I've got my family. I've got other Christians that love me. I love you. I want to be your friend. But if you can't be mine over that, then bye-bye, you know. And I, I find that really sad. Um, where's the grace? Where's the compassion? Where's tolerating other? I guess they can't do it. And so sometimes you've got to do that. And it's a very sad thing. But a lot of times it's the fact that they whispered. It's the fact that they cause strife. It's the fact that someone lied about you or said something wasn't true, and that separated your friendship. And that's a shame. And that's happened to me on various occasions. Uh, other Christians that before, man, they were like my best friend. I, I love them so much. I still think fondly of the good times we have together. And now, I don't even want to talk to them because they've said things about me that are so hateful, so mean, so ungodly, and they will not repent. They won't get it right. And they keep it out there. And it's just like, pfft, okay, it's time to move along. Time to move along. Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17. And uh, verse 7 through 14. We're going to read a, a bunch of passage here. But look what the Bible says about here. Proverbs 17, 7 through 14. Excellent speech becometh not a fool, much less do lying lips a prince. A gift is as a, as a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it. Whithersoever it turneth, it prospereth. 
He that covereth the transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth the matter separateth very friends. <laughs> Sometimes there are people who claim to be Christians and they just keep saying the same thing over and over and over. They get this thing in their head where they don't like you anymore or something and they just, they just start lying and they just say it over and over and over. They gossip. Gossip is a horrible thing. You know what that does? That, that can separate friends. And oftentimes it does. And it's a shame. Verse 10, a reproof entereth more into a wise man than a hundred fools into a stripe. An evil man seeketh only rebellion, therefore a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. Let a bear robbed of her whelps meet a man rather than a fool in his folly. Whoso rewardeth evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. Well, I just want to do good. I don't want to do evil. Now, my, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, verse 14, the beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water. Therefore, leave off contention before it be meddled with. You know, I don't agree 100% with every other Christian. And they let me know they don't believe 100% with me. And that's fine. We don't have to believe 100% on everything. We should believe 100% that the gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that we're saved through the blood of Christ. We should believe in eternal security. I mean, there's a long list of things that we should believe 100% because they are doctrine. But there's a lot of little non-essential little things that we don't have to agree on. And we can still be friends. But a lot of times there's Christians that all they want to do is be contentious. All they want to do is stir up strife. All they want to do is talk about this one thing that's their own little kind of pet peeve doctrine, if you will. And boy, have I met Christians like that over the years, that unless you believe what they believe about that one thing, why then you can't even be their friend. <laughs> and uh, I've lost a lot of friends over the years because of that. And it wasn't my fault. I'll be honest with you. I want to be their friend still to this day, but it's they are the ones that said, no, it's this way, and if you don't believe it, then, then, then oh, and, and it's like, whoa, hold on. Don't you see the problem? You're contentious. You're angry. You're, you're full of malice, and, and you're all the things that the Bible says you shouldn't be. And now you're going to speak evil against me? And I've had them run away and talk bad about me and say things about me that aren't true, and it's just sad. It's just, what do I do? Well, zip, I usually keep quiet. I haven't made any videos against them. I haven't said anything bad about them. I, I haven't even mentioned their names and I don't plan to. I want to do as much as I can to just go, okay, we'll see you in heaven and let the Lord straighten it out. In the meantime, the right thing for me to do is say, I forgive you. Okay? And I apologize if I said something I shouldn't. But if they're not going to get right, am I supposed to, you know, cower down to them and say, oh, I'm wrong because I don't agree with them. No, it's not like that. I want to make sure I agree with the scriptures and I want to believe the Bible. You know, one of the scariest things in the world is this. You know, people ask me, Brother Bricker, what keeps you up at night? One of the scariest things in the world is being deceived. You know what it means to be deceived? To be deceived is to think you're right and really believe that you're right when you're wrong. That's called being deceived. And that's something I don't ever want. I don't ever want to be deceived. I want to make sure that I believe the truth and, and, and know what the Bible says and can prove it from the scriptures. There's a lot of people out there that are deceived. They're deceiving and deceiving themselves. What does the Bible say about that? What does the Bible say about them? Well, 2 Thessalonians 3, 6. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, and verse 6, the Bible says this. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tra tradition which he, which he have received of us." So there are some Christians out there that claim to be Christians, but they're walking disorderly. They're what we call unruly. That's a Bible term. If you get a chance, look up my YouTube video entitled, uh, Are You Unruly? <laughs> Talk about that a little more. And so they, they just live to cause contention. Well, Bible says, leave off contention before it be meddled with. I read the verse to you. <laughs> But that's all they want. They're contentious and they just want to, to argue, to fight. And that's not me. That's not what I want. Because that brings out the worst out of Christians rather than the best. And I want what's right. I want to do what's right. Well, let me tell you about this once that goes over. <clears throat> so let me break this down. i got one more verse for you. And then I'll kind of make this personal about this week. Um, we're going to close with, with Matthew chapter 12. 
But this week we had something happen in which uh, my wife was very hurt by a, a comment that someone left. And uh, I'm not going to go into who it was or even where it was. It's not important. But someone who claims to be a Christian um, said something that, that just really hurt my wife really bad. And uh, my wife, you know, she, she just, it took a little while to get over it. Let's just put it that way. And I felt so bad for her. And I kept saying, honey, it's not important what they say. It's not important what they think. We know the truth. We know they're wrong. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But it hurt. It hurt my wife. And that's what, I want to, that's what I'm preaching on today, hurting others with words. What does the Bible say about that? Well, I don't even think that this person knows that they hurt my wife. But that's okay. That's all right. What does the Bible say? Should we hurt people? No. So what should we do when we're hurt? Well, the best thing to do is to separate. Like we saw, there's, there's some time when we need to separate from others because they won't repent. They won't get right. They won't apologize. They won't say things you know, that, are, that are right. They want to continue being contentious. They want to continue saying certain things that they shouldn't. Well, that's when we say, okay, see ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. But also, sometimes we just have to forget. And you know, sometimes that's hard, especially if we love somebody. Um, there's so many people in my life, and I just love them to death. And they've hurt me. And they've gone their own way, and they've talked against me, still talk bad against me, about me today. And it hurts, and I, and I want so bad to fellowship with them, I miss them. But what do I do? Well, the only thing I can do is just say, well, I'll see you in heaven, and, and I love you. And, and it, it does hurt, but... You can't force someone to do right. The only thing I know that I can do is come to you as a brother, as a friend, as a minister, as a Bible believer, and to just put this whole thing out there and then say, now that's what the Bible says. Will you please follow it? You know, you've said all these things. You've sold these lies. You've slandered. You, you've done all these things against me. The Bible says you're not supposed to do that. Now, are you going to get it right? And just leave it at that. So I've lost friends over the years. I've been hurt. My wife's been hurt. And it just, it's so sad. But you know what? Someday, it's all going to come out. That's why I want to make sure I have it right here and not have to face it up there. See, the rapture is coming soon. And when it does, well, then we go before the judgment seat of Christ. And when we go before the judgment seat of Christ, if there's something we have against a brother or something we've said against a brother or sister in Christ and we've said something we shouldn't, and we've, we're going to have to get that right. We're going to have to face that up there. And you know what we're going to lose? Rewards if we don't get it right down here. You know, I think it's in, in 1 John where he says, look to yourself that you receive a full reward, <laughs> that you don't lose rewards. I don't want to lose rewards in heaven. I want a full reward. So I want to make sure that down here I got things right. Because the Bible says this in Matthew 12, 36 through 37. Matthew 12, 36 says, and Jesus is speaking. He says, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So everything we say down here, someday we're going to give account to God for in heaven. So is there anything that you might have said in your life that you shouldn't have? Have you ever said anything about somebody that you know wasn't true? <laughs> Gossip? Lied about them? Maybe. Well, did you apologize? Did you talk to that person and say, hey, I'm sorry I said this about you? If not, well, <laughs> don't think it's over. It, you're going to face it up there. And then it'll get right, and praise God for that. But wouldn't it be better to get right now? I can't tell you how many times, how many times... And this is so sad that I've gone to churches. I, like I said before, I've preached in over 200 different churches in my life. And so many times I, I meet Christians and they say, Oh, Brother Breaker, have you heard of so-and-so? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I've heard of that guy. And Well, he did this, 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 and this. And they tell me, and, and I'm looking at that and I'm going, Why are you telling me this? That's gossip. I don't need to know this. Matter of fact, I've, I've gotten to the point to where I don't even want to hear you know, if I'm somewhere and someone's, Brother Brecker, did you hear about so-and-so? I go, no, and I don't want to. Because the less I know, the better. <laughs> because then I'd be tempted to say the same thing to someone else and to spread that gossip. It's like wildfire. So I'm like, no, no thanks. There's been many times, though, I've heard people say, have you heard about so-and-so? 
And uh, I'm like, "Uh uh-huh, okay. And I just kind of put that in the back of my head. And then I find someone that's like family with that person or or a very good friend. And I say, I heard someone said this and this about that. Is that true? Or even the person themselves. I'd meet the person. I say, yeah, I heard this about you. And they go, oh, no, Brother Breaker, that is not true. That is an outright lie that someone made against me out of hatred, out of malice, out of spite, out of anger. And it's being spread like wildfire. And I say, well, brother, that's, that's sad. That's sad. Yeah, it is, Brother Breaker. And it's hurt their ministry because people have chosen to believe that lie about that person. You know what's happened to me in my ministry? I, I could, man, I wish I could show everybody every email that I get so you could see what I see. <laughs> but I can't. But I get a lot of emails and people say, Brother Breaker, I, many, many emails are like this. I listened to so-and-so and and what they said about you and for the longest time I thought you were this or that or the other thing and I thought you were and they said but then one day I just started watching your videos on YouTube and I just went wow this guy's teaching what the Bible says this guy's telling us what the Bible said I don't see how he's what these people say and then they watch more and then they watch more and then they contact me and they say brother breaker I want to apologize I believed what they said when they spoke evil of you. And now I don't believe it anymore because your Bible teaching on YouTube, your testimony speaks for itself. And I just want you to know I'm sorry that I I believed what they said. And I just look at that and I go, hey, don't apologize to me. I'm just glad you got the truth. I'm just glad you see the truth. Amen. But boy, is it sad that these people persist, that these people continue to lie to slander, to say things that aren't true. It is very sad to me because that is not, and I repeat, not what God said. I might as well say it because it's the truth. Sad to me to see how there's a lot of Christians that are, that are rather than doing God's work and getting the gospel out, it's like they're spending more time working for the devil, speaking bad and attacking other Christians, than working for Jesus and witnessing to the lost. It's one of the saddest things I've ever seen in my life. I still don't understand it. The Bible says it is a shame to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Yeah, maybe a guy is a sinner. Maybe a guy does something wrong and he sins. Okay, are we supposed to go talk and tell everybody he did this? You know, there's things in the Bible that that, that are like rules of of what you're supposed to follow. All right, let's say a, a brother in Christ does something. Well, the Bible says that if he did something against another brother, he's supposed to come to him in private. All right? Then, if this brother doesn't listen, then he's supposed to come in two or three, and they come to him. And then, if the brother doesn't repent, well, then they take it to the church. Well, I don't see that nowadays. A lot of people claim to be Christians, but they're not following the Scripture. I've had people say, Brother Breaker, you're a heretic, and I believe you're wrong on this doctrine or that doctrine or whatever. And I say, okay, well, bring it to me privately, like the Bible says. Send me an email, call me on the phone, let's talk it out. They never do. Uh, Get another brother or sister in Christ and bring them to me. Let's talk about it together. Never do. All right, well, let's take it to the church. They never do. No, they jump on YouTube, they make a video, and they take it to the whole world, many of which are lost. And they say, Robert Breaker is a demon from hell. Why, he's not even saved. He's a liar. He's a phony. He's a deceiver. He's a racist. And and they just make up these outlandish lies. And they give it to the whole world. And they claim to be ministers of Christ and of the gospel of the grace of God. And they have no grace whatsoever themselves. And they tell you that they're doing right. But they're not even obeying the scriptures. You know why? The scripture says, reject a heretic after the second admonition. All right, if you believe Robert Breaker's a heretic, why are you making video after video after video after video? Uh, There was one guy, he made 14 videos in one day against Robert Breaker. And he says he's a King James Bible believer. And he's speaking evil about me. Is he? (laughs) I don't know. But I don't look at that and go, oh, I'm going to talk bad about them. I don't even want to talk about them. But uh, this subject has been brought up a lot of times. And there's a lot of other Christians out there that say, Brother Breaker, there's people talking bad about me. What do I do? What does the Bible say about that? 
Well, I don't know what else to do but to bring you scripture and to show you what the Bible says. The Bible says they're not supposed to do that. If they hurt you, you're supposed to forgive them. I know that's hard. I talked to one lady one time. She goes, I don't know if I can. She said this about me that was so hateful, so mean, so awful. I can't forgive. And it's like, but you got to. Christ forgave us. We've got to forgive them. So I don't want to talk about these people. I don't want to feed them. I don't want, if, if they're attackers, I want my viewers to know it hurts sometimes. Some of the lies they say, some of the, and I know you're hurt. You see, I think it hurts my viewers more than it hurts me. <laughs> From time to time, people send me emails saying, Brother Breaker, did you see this new video against you? Did you see this? Please don't do that anymore. I'm not really interested in what people say against me. But here's what I suggest. If you do watch a video where someone is slandering, someone is lying, someone is not what they're supposed to be because they're evil speaking against me, go to the comments. Don't be mean yourself. Don't be evil yourself. Don't say mean-spirited, hateful. Don't cuss. Just give Bible verses. You know, 1 Peter 2, 1. You know, lay aside all evil speaking. You know, just, just give them scripture. Let them know that they're wrong in what they're doing. Okay? Well, they'll, they'll say, and I understand, they'll come out and say, No, Robert Breaker's wrong. Okay, then why don't they obey the scriptures? I am the most transparent person in the world. I have my home address and my home phone number on my website. There is no excuse, none whatsoever, for them to not call me or write me a letter. None. But they won't. And what they're doing is they're showing that all they want to do is attack. All they want to do is ridicule and mock and make fun of me and try to put me down. And their, their justification for it is, well, I think Robert Breaker's a heretic. And he's not preaching the Bible. He's not a King James believer. I'm tired of dealing with them, to be honest with you. And I don't want to make any more videos about them or anything like that. But I felt like I had to come to you and just show you what the Bible said. Because I believe that you'll see what I see. These people are not following the scripture. The Bible says not to speak evil of others. If that's what they're doing, then they're wrong. And they're going to give account to God for it someday. Um, on YouTube, you can report them. You know, if somebody, the other day, I, I actually had to report someone. Uh, someone sent me an email and said, Brother Breaker, this guy is against you because he says that uh, you're against the Sabbath. Well, okay, the Sabbath is Saturday. The Bible says we're no longer under the law. Exodus chapter 31 says the Sabbath is for Israel under penalty of death. There, there was a death penalty for Israel. So this guy, he made a video against me and he says, Robert Breaker says people that break the Sabbath must die. <laughs> and I was like, what? That is outright libel. It's slanderous to say such a thing because that is saying that I say, go kill people. I've never said that. So I had to report that to YouTube. And, uh, well, I don't know if they took his video down or not. But uh, there are rules on YouTube for, for things like that. And I don't think it's Christian to talk bad about other Christians. I don't think it's right to name call, to ridicule, to put down, to mock. When the Bible says, put away all evil speaking. That's what the Bible says. So I wanted to bring this to you. I want to speak from the heart. Um, I tell you, you know, my wife's been through it this week. Um, I've had some people this week. I've lost some friends this week over things like this because they choose to believe what someone else says, but they don't understand that person isn't following the scripture. And what I want to do is follow what the Bible says. The Bible tells us to be meek, quiet, um, spirit. Uh, the Bible tells us to have grace, mercy, kindness, love, brotherly kindness. And I just want to show myself as a testimony of a true Christian. And I hope you'll do the same. And I appreciate y'all putting up with me having to talk about this one more time. <laughs> I'm not attacking my attackers. I will not stoop to their level. Um, people say, well, don't even talk about them. Well, that's the thing. I'm actually preaching to them in this sermon. Because I want to give them one more admonition. One more chance to get right with God. I want to hold up this book and say, hey, you really think you're following this book? You really think so? When you're doing the opposite of what it says? 
you really think you're a child of God, maybe you're saved. Do you really think you're spirit-filled when you devote your time to running, to mischief? You can't wait to talk bad about other Christians. You jump on anything you can to attack another brother in Christ. Do you really think you're a Bible believer? You say, oh, I'm a King James Bible believer. Are you even reading it? If you were, you'd try to obey it. Okay? Now, I hope I didn't come across as angry today. I'm not. I'm really sad. I'm really sad. It was sad for me to see my wife get hurt. Sad for me to see all the emails and phone calls I've got this week of other Christians that are going through the same thing. Brother Breaker, someone lied about me. What do I do? The only thing you can do, go to the book of Psalms and look at what David did. He took it to the Lord and he said, Lord, you know, you know. So I just pray, God, that you just show the truth. Lord, I place it in your hands. Lord, you get them <laughs> for their lies. Lord, you show them that they're lying. Lord, would you please get this thing right? Because if you don't get right now, you're going to give account later. You're going to have to tell God why you chose not to obey the Bible. Why you chose to do the opposite of what it says. Boy, I tell you, I would not want to be in your shoes. Well, there it is. Thank you for letting me get that out and off my chest. They man, I've been holding that in for a long time. And I wanted to do this correctly and where I'm pointing you to the Bible. I don't want to give my opinions. I don't want to be angry. I just want to say, hey, let's all, if we all claim to believe this book, let's all abide by what it says and act the way it says and talk the way it says we're supposed to. All right. Thank you for watching. Um, next week, we'll, we'll see you again. Jesus is coming soon, and the sooner he comes, well, that'll be great. But until he does, I want to be a true Christian, and I hope you do as well. God bless. See you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Robert Breaker, and I am out here at the cemetery today. I thought I'd show you where my dad's buried and my grandmother. I think I talked about that in my sermon. Here's uh, dad's grave. Romans 3.25, good verse. And here's my grandmother's, and, uh, oops, broke that off. She's here. There's the verse that I told you about, Ephesians 4. And yeah, my grandpa's not buried here. His ashes are up in Wyoming. I'm always hoping someday I'd get a chance to go up there and get his ashes and bring them back, put them next to my grandmother. But there it is. There's... Dad's grave, I thought I'd share that with you. Just the thought, you know, that the rapture's gonna come real soon. When it does, boy, that's gonna just pop right open. And he's coming out, and she's coming out. That's just, whew, that's just amazing to think about. Just wanted to share that with you. Amen.